Hello everybody, how is it going? Before we get into this video, I want to explain two things really quick. First of all, why is my microphone down here? It's because my usual boom arm that I use for stuff broke. Uh, I already have a new one coming, but just in case you're confused why the microphone is down here. It's gonna be down here for a little bit. Second, what is this? Well, I'm bringing back kind of my little indie game review series, and I want to make this just a consistent part of the channel going forward. When I originally started this a while ago, I really enjoyed it, but I never really felt like I had enough time to invest into it to really make sure it's good. Well, now I have time. Now I feel like I can do it. So I want to do it. What does this mean? Well, it means that what I want to do is I want to play indie games on Steam, um, indie games on stream, and then give you like a little review of what I think it's like. Now, it's not going to be a super detailed review, it's going to be more along the lines of what I think they do right, what I think they don't do so well, and then just kind of a recommendation whether or not you should pick it up. Um, it will all be done from like my perspective though, of course, right? It will be done from my perspective as somebody who has worked on games and somebody who has developed games and specifically worked as a game designer, right? That's my thing. In case you aren't too sure in what capacity I've worked as a game designer, I have worked as a game designer for my own games and for other companies. That's something that a lot of people seem to forget about, but I have actually worked for other companies as well. It's just I prefer working on my own projects, so that's really all you see from me these days. It's just me making my own stuff but anyway so that's uh that's what it is that's what we're gonna do today the game we're looking at today you can already hear the music in the background it's going to be snkrx now snkrx is a game that i've played a lot of um in fact i it's a game that i played a lot during the forever stream so i've played 31 hours of this game i have beaten it in every way imaginable I think you can already tell based on the fact that I did that much that I quite like this game. I think this game is really cool, but mostly I think this game is really interesting and we'll get into why in a second. First, uh, this game is incredibly affordable. It's 239 on Steam, so it also has a mobile version, but yeah, it's, it's not very expensive. Um, on top of that, this game is developed by A327EX, which is just an indie developer, which is always great. It's nice to support indie developers. Um, they've released the game already, but that was a little while ago. At the end of the SNKRX campaign, or after you kind of beat a run, you'll, you'll understand in a second. At the end of that, uh, the game tells you that this was actually made in only three months. From what I understand, originally the plan was to make the game in three months and then just move on with it, like just leave it behind and make the next game, which I think is actually pretty neat. Uh, but it turns out that this game has actually been quite successful. And as such, the developer has definitely put in more effort um, than was originally intended. And you can see that in the regular balance patches and just kind of updates that get released for it, which is very cool. Let's have a quick look at the options menu before we get into things. <clears throat> the options menu is terrible. It's really bad, as you can see. There's barely anything here. Uh, you can't select proper window sizes. You can only, like, go make it smaller or bigger. You have full screen, I guess, which is cool. You have, like, small controls. You can't rebind any buttons and, any, and nothing like that. And also, the music and volume side of sliders, the sound effects volume, music volume, is terrible. There's no master volume, and it's one of the worst system that I have ever seen because it only lets you go up before it goes down. Like, you have to go all the way to max volume before you can go uh, down in volume, which is just terrible. But anyway, <laughs> now this is, this may sound like I'm just hopping on this game right away, but the important thing here is that it, wait, it works both ways? Oh, they fixed that! All right, thank you. This is why it's nice to have chat here. So this used to be the case that you could only go up, but I guess, again, the game has been updated. The game has received more content and fixes, so I suppose this was something that was added um, recently. So there you go. Now, anyway, let's get into the game. So how does this game play? Well, you will have runs that you do. So I start my run right here, and now I am in an arena run. Now, this game uses an auto chess style store, but, and it's very important to remember this, uh, this is an entirely single player game. There's no multiplayer component whatsoever. It's 100% single player. What is an auto chess style store? Well, an auto chess style store is a store that gives you a random selection of things that you can buy, 
And then when you buy them, you know, they disappear out of the store and you can re-roll the store. You can upgrade the store to get bigger stuff, more expensive stuff, more powerful stuff. And um, you can kind of lock the store. It re-rolls at the end of every round. I'll explain what rounds or levels in this case are in a second. On top of that, each of these units that you buy, they each have classes and they each have abilities. So you can see this guy is a rogue, this guy is a mage, this guy is a ranger. If I have three rogues, then all of my rogues gain a 15% chance to crit, uh, as, which deals four times damage. If I have three rangers, I get a chance to release a barrage on attack uh, to allied rangers. So they have a chance to like attack quicker, mages, reduce enemy defense, and so on. You can see up here we have our party, three out of seven. So we can have a maximum of seven units in our party. And we can level up the units as we go through it. But let's go ahead and see how it plays first. So we're going to enter level one of 25. And this is how it goes. So you can see we have our little snake here. And this snake, uh, well, it follows your mouse. If you have that setting enabled. If you don't, you can also control it with uh, the A and D buttons. Personally, I prefer it with the mouse. It just kind of makes a bit more sense to me. <laughs> I don't know, it just works a bit better for me. But if you prefer it the other way around, I can understand that. Now, you can see here, we have a new set of units in the store. We have another scout. Now, we already have a scout. If I buy a second one, you can see that it now adds to this scout. This doesn't do anything yet, but if I find a third one, it will level up this scout to level two. And then if I find another three, then I have a second level two. And then if I find another three, so a total of nine scouts, I get a level three scout. Now, only the ones on the very right are ones that I actually have in my party. The rest of these don't actually count towards my party. All right, so like this scout isn't going to be doing anything. But you can see here, for example, I have another uh, unit. This time around, I have a sentry, which has two types. So this is a ranger and a builder, which is always nice because that means I can pursue multiple strategies at the same time. But now I'm out of money, can't buy this merchant, but that's okay. I could, for example, sell this magician to get this merchant, but I don't think I will. Anyway, so you can see we're going into the fight again. And it's all very simple. So when I originally uh, played this game on stream, I was kind of joking a lot about how it's essentially just... its its They basically skipped having to add graphics. <laughs> they just They were just like, all right, let's just make a game, but like not make any graphics for it, um, which is kind of interesting. Oh, perfect. You can see here I've got two more magicians. And now I have a level 2 Magician, which is better than a level 1 Magician. We can also level up our Archers. All of these towers gain bonus effects at level 3 as well, where they get a more powerful ability, which is very nice. Now, while we're in the fight here, you can see that below our snake, below each individual part, there's this little bar. That's an attack meter. So you can see whenever we attack, that empties, and then it recharges, and when it's full, we attack again. So it's kind of like the cooldown on your attack, or... You know, I guess an attack me though, however you want to think about it, right? But that's what we need to fill up to attack. Now, if we run into one of these enemies, let me just do it for you. Then we take damage. You can see that now my units are actually damaged, which isn't so great. You can also see the current HP of my units in the bottom left corner here, which is just nice. All right, cool. We got ourselves some stuff. So at the end of this round, we get to choose an item. We can choose Unrelenting Stance, Shoot 5, Fracture or Unleash. Uh, which, let's get Unrelenting Stance, because this is really good, like, really good. That's just very powerful. <laughs> very good. Oh, cool, we got another Scout. We got Vagrant, Cleric. Don't worry so much about what the individual towers do. Just know that I'm pretty happy that I have two level 2 units right now. This right here is an item. I'm going to go ahead and move my face away for a second. Uh, but you can see we have an item here. This Unrelenting Stance gives us plus 2% defense to all allies whenever warriors hit. A warrior is another type of class. We don't currently have a warrior, uh, but, you know, this will be another thing that kind of, like, gives us that, uh, that has a synergy with these classes. We can upgrade these. So it costs 10 gold to upgrade, and then another 15 to upgrade to level 3. So we kind of need to manage our resources. Now talking about managing our resources, currently we have free gold left over. You can carry gold between turns or between levels. So I have free gold now and if I now clear this level, I will have free gold plus whatever I earn for this level right here. 
if I uh, have more than five gold, I will gain interest. So for every five gold, I will gain one additional gold at the start of every round, up to a maximum of five. A lot of you might be very familiar with these mechanics. These are auto chess mechanics. Very much classic auto chess mechanics. And to me, that's what makes this game so interesting. Because it essentially said, hey, why can't I take this auto chess style system, like an auto chess style store, an auto chess style level ups, and auto chess style income, auto chess style economy, why can't I take all of this and just add it into a game? Like any game. And I think that's fascinating. Obviously, that's kind of like an obvious thought right now that I say it. Like, why wouldn't you be able to do that? But I'm sure that me, like many, kind of consider these mechanics to be something that's more for like, you know, your classic auto chess style game. Something like Hearthstone Battlegrounds or, you know, auto chess, teamfight tactics, or maybe even, you know, the newer stuff in Dota 2, like Atomic War, right? That's kind of how I thought about them. But really, there is no reason why it has to be that way. You can just add this stuff into any game you like. And I think that's such a cool thought. That is such a cool way of thinking about it. All right? So why, for example, can't I have auto chess first-person shooters? You might say, well, that sounds kind of stupid. And yeah, maybe it does sound kind of stupid. But why not? Right? Like, I'm sure there's a way to make that work. We have an elite here. This is just like a stronger enemy. Right? I can make an auto chess style first person shooter. I can make an auto chess role playing game. Right? Why can't I do these things? To me, what this game did, what SNKRX did, that I think is absolutely brilliant and fascinating, and I, I very deeply respect the creator for it is they took the system that I think was very widely considered to be something that is to be used for... Oh, by the way, we get uh, some stuff here. Yeah, let's get offensive stance, maybe. Why not? Right, but they took these systems that are very widely considered to be something that's mostly used for very specific kind of games and just said, why can't I expand this? Why can't I use this for, well, anything I want, really? And yeah, you're right. There's no reason why you wouldn't be able to do that. It is such a strong system. To me personally, what, like, the real innovation of Auto Chess was this kind of system. This is why for a long time, and I stand by this to this day, I think, oh, I've, I've been saying, and I still believe this, is that the auto chess genre or auto battler genre as it's called um, these days it's just they they don't explore very much they all just copy auto chess or they make their own twist on auto chess but they don't really do anything new with it and i think that's a shame like why can't you just take these systems and add them into an entirely different genre of game there's really nothing stopping you from doing so and i like this game right here in particular a lot because it's doing exactly that and that i think is fucking sick anyway i think that's just super super cool and so i am uh honestly very enthusiastic about SNKRX not necessarily because it's the greatest game ever made to be honest it can be a little annoying at times because the way enemies spawn in they can spawn in right on top of you <laughs> right like they spawn in at random spots around the map like there's kind of like a preset uh, list of spots where they can spawn but Especially as we enter the later levels, you will see that multiple spots can be occupied and your snake can get kind of in the way and they spawn right on top of you and then you take a ton of damage and, and that can be a little bit annoying. And also, I'm not gonna lie, as much as the graphics for this game are fine, they are not good. Like, they work for what it is, but it could have been more, you know what I mean? Anyway. We have 46 gold right now, so we can, for example, come in here and upgrade our shop a little bit. It's not too bad, and then we can re-roll here, so we haven't done that yet. We have a bunch of level 2 units, but one of the problems we currently have is that 
pretty much none of our level 2 units actually synergize with each other, so they're not very good for us. We probably want to see if we can find some warriors, because we have a warrior synergy here. Um, offensive stance is also pretty good with warriors, so look at that. Perfect, we have a barbarian. Alright, so we grab ourselves this. That seems pretty alright. Cool. Alright, let's continue on here. Now, I think the simple graphics work fine for the game. I agree. I think the simple graphics do work fine, right, uh, for what it is. But it is very small in scope. And there's definitely an argument to be made that it could be bigger in scope. But this is what's important to remember here. This game is not even free bucks. This game is basically free. You just, you just, you don't even have to, you don't even have to shill out, as, like, the cost for, like, you know, a coffee for this. This is not an expensive game. And so I am willing to forgive all of that. I think this game is fantastic and you should really give it a try. It is a very, very interesting concept. And honestly, I think this game is probably going to have a pretty big influence on the kind of auto battlers we're going to see in the future. Because it really took this system that has been very kind of trapped in this restrictive mindset and just said, well, why can't I do whatever I want with it? And you're right. You can do whatever you want with it. Anyway, what are we getting here? So we can also re-roll this, see if we get something better. Oh, none of this is particularly great. Um, all of this is still really bad. Um, amplify, AoE damage. Hey, let's get... Two or more enchanters. I need a bunch of enchanters for this, though. Ah, oh, whatever. That's fine. Oh, cool, a Highlander. Alright, so we get ourselves, we get rid of this guy, we grab ourselves the Highlander. Now we have the Warrior Synergy. This makes all of our guys quite a bit tankier. Um, we also have Unrelenting Stance, so I'm just gonna save my money so I can upgrade that in a little bit. But yeah. So anyway, um, SNKRX. One thing that I also really have to mention about this game, the soundtrack is a banger. <laughs> now the soundtrack wasn't made for this game specifically, the soundtrack is basically just an album of like an artist but personally i think that's a very very good cost efficient way of making a soundtrack for a game right you just find existing music as opposed to making new music let me just tell you one thing people don't realize how expensive music is to make like honestly it's it's kind of wild how much you have to pay for good music if you want to make like an original soundtrack um as somebody working in the indie space myself um just hiring like or i guess like licensing music which is what this is right just licensing existing music is way more affordable and honestly if you just spend some time looking for something that fits with what you're trying to do it's not that difficult to find something that feels like it was made for the game right so here we go we get unrelenting stance now which is good that's very effective. And I, I like this music a lot. Overall, I think the sound design is something that is very much to be praised. <laughs> when I originally played this game, I kept joking about the fact that if this game had worse music and worse sound design, it, it wouldn't be half as good. Because it's really, the visuals don't do this game any favors, right? Um, now, you might be like, again, like, ah, oh, they, they are fine, they're fine. Sure, right? I can see how, how you, you might like them. In a way, they have a certain charm to them. Personally, I think there definitely is a lot more that could have been done there, but again, it's a free buck game. It's kind of difficult to critique it on these kind of things. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say about SNKRX. It's a small game with a small scope. It is just kind of neat in terms of concept and idea, and I, I really like it for that. Um, but overall, there isn't really like a crazy amount happening with it. Let me go ahead and just pick up all of this stuff really quick. Hey, we're gonna get ourselves our six warriors. I think that's our plan here, right? Um, we go ahead and upgrade these. I like upgrading the items first because they give me a lot of... Like, they are kind of guaranteed as opposed to rolling in the shop, which isn't as guaranteed. We are now building warriors, which have a lot of these, like, AoE-style attacks, which is pretty cool. Anyway, by the way, I'm not really explaining a lot of the units right now. 
that I'm buying. It's okay, you don't really need to worry so much about that. As you play the game, you will experience them yourself. I just recommend that you like actually take the time to like read through all of the abilities. Um, if you don't do that, it can become a bit difficult to really keep track of like what you're building and why what you're building is good. But something that's, again, it's just nice about the auto chest principle is that you can also just, you know, get the good stuff, right? Get the things that make sense for you. Oh, perfect. We are going for enchanters. Let's get that. Right, but you can just get the guys that are just, you know, like sensible for what you're trying to do here in terms of uh, in terms of synergies. And then you don't need to worry so much about, you know, any other logic behind it. Anyway, we do... Actually, I guess I could probably level this up. This gives me more damage when I have enchanters. So I'm going for like a warrior enchanter strat, which is quite nice because there is a warrior that is an enchanter and I have... You need six warriors for the maximum synergy, and you need um, two enchanters to get the all of the enchanter synergies that we are looking for. And you have seven spots, which works out perfectly, right? Because one warrior is an enchanter, so we can actually get everything we want. We do just need to make sure we get all of the warriors going on. One of the problems that warriors have, which is like kind of a small issue, is that they don't deal a crazy amount of damage, but they are very tanky. All right, now this is something the game doesn't really communicate very well. It doesn't really tell you like which units have how much HP because different units have very significant amounts of health and damage output. And it just straight up doesn't really tell you about the health part. It does tell you about the damage, but even that is a bit limited because it tells you how much damage an attack does, but it doesn't tell you how much cooldown an attack has, which is obviously equally important. It doesn't really matter if my attack does a trillion damage if it has a year-long year, year long cooldown, right? <laughs> like, it's just the attack rate is equally important to the damage output. Um, but, you know what? I think overall that's still fine. Because these kind of things are just not that crazy important here. Right? You can just kind of figure it out by testing it a little bit. And uh, it, 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 it does make kind of logical sense, like warriors are tanky and rogues are DPS heavy and archers are really squishy. To be honest, everything is really squishy except for like warriors. <laughs> this is maybe, maybe a bit of a problem of the game, at least. I don't know. So I have beaten this game in all of the ways you can beat it, which means I have gotten, um, I've gotten, what's it called? I've gotten uh, to new game plus five and beaten new game plus five. I also played New Game Plus 5 to plus uh, to Wave 100 just because I thought that was fun. Um, it doesn't get more than that. So like past New Game Plus 5, the game just tells you, hey, this is this is it. This is all we have prepared for you. Um, but to be honest, again, I, I think that's totally fine. That was quite a bit of playtime I got out of it. And uh, well, let me see what we get here. We don't really want the Magician, so that's not super useful. We're going to level this up really quick. And we wait with that because we need the squire first. Outlaw. We don't need the magician. So the reason why I'm not buying the magician is because I just... I don't get anything out of it. I'm not planning on keeping the magician. Anyway, sorry. What was I saying? Oh, yes. Uh, so, you know, I played to new game plus five. I played it with all kinds of different strategies. I don't think I've actually beaten the game with every single possible strategy. But I do have to say that I personally find it just by far the easiest to beat with warriors. Because they're like tanky and can actually take some hits. Um, as opposed to a lot of the other units, which kind of just die in like single hits, which is a bit scary. Anyway, I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, work our way through this. Take all of this down, no big deal. Right, so you can see it's all about a bit of this like positioning style play. Um, it <laughs> so it's, you know, kind of snake, but of course it has a very, it has like the snake style controls, but not really. Uh, it just kind of visually looks a little bit like snake. What do we get here? We can get uh, additional projectiles, chains, defense. I think none of these are great. The stand that gives us some stuff. Healing effectiveness. No, still not great. Sorcerer spell repeat, but we're not using sorcerers. Annihilation. Nope, still nothing here. Echo barrage. Oh, this is 
amazing. So this is a very powerful effect that is very good with warriors because warriors have a lot of AoE, right? Like we're trying to do a lot of AoE stuff. So it makes a lot of sense to use something that amplifies AoE with us. <clears throat> but yeah. Anyhow. I'm going to just go ahead and play a little bit and uh, see if we can make our way through it. Right now that I've kind of given my opinion on the game here, I think I can like probably spend a bit more time explaining my specific strategy for this playthrough here. I'm not sure if we're going to beat the game. <laughs> I'm not sure if we're going to beat the run. It's actually kind of tricky to do, but we actually do also have a fairly strong setup right now. So we'll see, but I am open um, to, to beating it. Let's just... I, I would be pretty happy about it. I would feel pretty good, you know? <laughs> anyway. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of stuff coming at us. So this is kind of a problem. We just lost the guy. That's what that looks like. When somebody dies, then that unit can't attack anymore, obviously, because it's dead. And that's uh, unfortunate. Oh, we are taking a lot of damage here. Wow. So it's just three of our guys alive at this point. But... We got it. No big deal. Swordsman. Very good. One, two. One, two, three. So now we have a very high chance here to create additional AoEs whenever we do AoE, which can lead to some very fun stuff. Like, especially... So, that's a bit of a spoiler, I guess, but you know what? It's fine. At higher difficulties, at higher new game plus kind of levels, right? Enemies get stronger. That's that's one thing that changes. But another thing that changes that I think is actually really cool is you can get a longer snake. So right now, the maximum length of our snake, as you can see, is 7. Well, at New Game Plus 5, the maximum length is 12. That, of course, allows for many, many, many more synergies, like just for m much bigger, stronger combos. And that's really interesting because you can just do a lot of wild stuff with it. And that's something I really enjoy about this game. Is that it's just kind of like, hey, it's fine if you're overpowered. And I'm like, thank you. Yeah, it should be fine. Because this is kind of a roguelike. Well, I guess it is a roguelike, right? Um, and I, I don't know. I personally always really like it when those types of games just kind of are okay with letting you be overpowered. I think that's neat. No, I like being overpowered. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I always find that to be very fun. Alright. Now you can see here that the different enemies have different abilities, right? So the blue ones, when they die, they shoot out this like little projectile. And the purple ones, they leave these small little enemies behind. And the green ones buff everything around themselves when they die. There's all kinds of different enemies with different effects. And... Uh, yeah, that's just like something to keep in mind here, right? That you need to kind of like tackle the different enemies with different styles. However, it's of course a little bit difficult because it's all purely based on color, which I think can probably cause an issue for people that might not be the best at telling the different colors apart, which I always think is a bit unfortunate. All right, we're going to sell this here to stay above 25. Uh, I'm just kind of trying to get myself the last uh, two remaining warriors we need here, but we're not really finding them. Oh, hello. Get this guy. When units die, they respawn in the next round. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when your guys die, that only applies for the current kind of wave. It doesn't mean they are now permanently dead. Uh, but if your entire snake dies, then you are permanently dead. Then the run is permanently over. So you need to be a little careful with that. But it is actually a little forgiving. And to be honest, sometimes I find it even a bit easier to play, like when I only have one or two guys remaining, because my snake is just smaller, making it a bit easier to navigate around the enemies. Alright. No, that's not what I thought it was. Hmm. Um. Hey, why not? We have offensive stance. Why not get defensive stance? Oh, there's Blade. Very good. So, we need to get rid of something. I think I get rid of the scout. And I am just hoping to find that squire. So, squire is a tier 2 unit. 
which means the chance of us finding it shouldn't be too bad. But not not looking not looking too good right now. Oh well. No big deal. Upgrade shop. The shop upgrades automatically on its own a little bit, so you can see we're currently at level 4. And personally, I don't think you actually want to go much higher than that, because at the higher levels, it really reduces your chance of fighting these lower tier units, and you tend to want to have to... You tend to want to level those up as well. So, that's kind of like something that's a bit tricky. Anyway, there's lots of really fun different synergies in the store, and honestly, I think something this game does really well is provide uh, with the items, right? So that's the kind of like permanent buffs that like you're, you now have more damage in the first position and in the last position and all of that stuff. I think those are really fantastic. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff there. Okay. But yes, we only need one more warrior, then we're going to have our warrior synergy and our enchanter synergy. And then we're going to level up our items to max, and then we're going to just roll for upgrades. Of course, uh, rolling for upgrades, that can always be a little... <laughs> you can always get a little unlucky there. <laughs> but I think that's just part of it. Oh, we just saw a new enemy, so that is... Uh... Snack jam, snack jam, snack jam. Hey, Todeschnitzel. Thank you very much, dude. Appreciate it. So, uh, of course, there are some... They, we just saw a new enemy. Those are those orange ones. What they do is they kind of, like, yeet themselves at you. They charge at you with, like, really high speed. And they do a ton of damage when they connect. So you need to kind of kill them before they get to do that. You can also just run into people to deal some damage to them. But, of course, then you also take damage. So you don't really want to do that if there's still risk involved. Oh, there's a Juggernaut. Okay. So this is not ideal... I'm going to buy it anyway, because now we have all of our um, warriors. But we're still looking for specifically the squire. Um, because the squire fits our synergies better than um, the, the juggernaut does. So, ideally I would like to find that soon. Okay. But look at us, we do a lot of damage now. Very good. <laughs> I mean, isn't that just fantastic? These yellow ones are tanks. They are very difficult to take down, and what they will do is they will throw, like, allies at you, which is kind of rude of them, honestly. Woo! Look at that! Slice them! <laughs> so you can see we are starting to get some fun effects going on here, don't we? Well, it's gonna be even more fun once we get that Squire, because that's kind of, like, missing for our final synergies here. Oh, no. Yeah. So you can see we have a bunch of Warriors, and the Warriors are very difficult to take down, so they can take some damage. But we do also have one Mage, and that Mage is pretty much always gonna die first. Which is kind of annoying, because that Mage is a buffer. <laughs> you know, just providing us with some assistance here. But, oh, well. Very good. Nice. Arena clear. And, uh, okay, let's roll for the Squire. Swordsman, Juggernaut, Juggernaut. Okay, I overbought a little. So I just kind of like rolled a bunch. It's fine. At these later levels, you don't make most of your money via income. You make most of your money with the... With the kind of like round cash you get. Oh, very good. Oh, something that's also noteworthy about this game is that it's actually pretty open to modding. Which is always cool. I always like that. Like, the developer is just pretty chill about all kinds of stuff, so... Yeah. Alright. 
Okay, let's do a little bit here. Something you may have noticed that is that sometimes the bars for attack are full, but the units aren't attacking. That's because they are waiting for something to get into range. So they won't just blindly throw their stuff. There's a little bit more thought put into it than that. Ah, oh, we lost our, our mage again. <laughs> well, that's kind of to be expected, right? Ow! Yeah, goddammit, this orange guy. We gotta be careful of those. Ooh. Ooh, that's not good. So we only have three now remaining. Luckily, we are quite tanky. But that's still a fairly small army. And something that can actually get beaten by these orange guys pretty quickly. Alright, we need to make sure we don't get hit by these. Um, there's kind of two ways of doing that. First is to kill them. And second is to hide behind other enemies. Fuck. <laughs> oh no! Come on. Alright, alright. We're just, just barely still in this. Alright, wave 9. So we're just, again, we're just hiding behind other enemies. Oh, dear god. Alright, very good. This is the last wave. <laughs> oh no. Oh dear god. Okay, this is bad. Alright, hide behind things. Yes! Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Woo! I think we're still okay. Yeah, luckily, luckily the warriors are pretty difficult to kill. Nah, it's fine. It's not even close. Alright, assassination. Shoots projectiles, psycho orbs. Uh... Vulnerability, Malediction, Taunt. No, no. Chronomancy. No, we don't really have any mages. Okay, still. Silencing Strike, Vulnerability. I'm just, just kind of hoping we find something fun here. Alright, let's get this. The nice thing about that is it doesn't require any upgrades. I'm gonna roll for my for um, nothing, nothing. Okay. You know, one day we will find our squire. It would be good to find a squire soon, but <laughs> but that's okay. Oh, also, I did pretty. I did something pretty bad here. So, you saw a second ago, we got our third position now has increased attack speed. Well, my third position is currently the guy that isn't attacking, the guy that just buffs stuff. So that's not ideal, and uh, I should have should have repositioned my stuff a little bit. You can't just rearrange the order of your units freely, so I should have definitely done that. All right. Okay, I'm feeling pretty optimistic here. Alright. No big deal. I'm just kind of trying to stay away from everything. You know, like keeping to the edges here. That's kind of the tricky thing with uh, Warriors. You want to be on top of everything so your AoEs connect, but of course you also don't want to be on top of everything because that's where you die. So it's uh, kind of like a matter of like weaving in and out at the right moments. Or as you can see, just weaving in and then dying, like that's what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, very good. The different classes really do have very different, like, playstyles, I think. 
well, maybe not like different playstyles so much. You most of the time you're still just kind of like trying to avoid enemies, even if warri with warriors. But it it feels very different to play them. Let's just put it that way. Like with uh, mages, you have like all of these huge fancy AOE effects, and with sorcerers, it's just this constant barrage of never-ending spells. And well, with uh, archers and assassins, you're just throwing a ton of projectiles, and it just like has a very unique feeling to each of the different classes. Although. Now that I think about it, really, they don't actually play that differently. You're pretty much always just trying to run away and, you know, get your damage in. The complexity of this game is not that high, as you can tell. I don't think that's a bad thing. I actually like that. Not everything has to have a million rules, you know? Okay. So, um, let's hope we find our guy. There he is. All right, what do we get rid of? Uh, we could get rid of Blade. Um, Blade is very strong. Uh, we could get... Probably get rid of the Barbarian, honestly. The stun is not that useful. It's the least damaging thing we have. Yeah, I think we get rid of the Barbarian. All right, here we go. We got our Squire going on. Very good. Now we want to make sure that we rearrange this a little bit. Let's maybe put this here. Squire here. Kind of like this, maybe. So now we have this enchanter. And then we have this, which gives bonus attack speed if you have two or more enchanters. Which we have two or more enchanters. Right? And this, of course, gives us damage, defense, and attack speed if you have one or more enchanters. And this guy gives damage and defense to all allies, and this gives attack speed to all allies, all of which is pretty fantastic. And I actually just realized we have no reason to level this guy up. Like, like there's just no point. <laughs> so we're just gonna sell this. And I'm gonna go ahead and max this out right now. Again, at this point, I personally think there's not that much use to necessarily investing a lot into maintaining the the high income because it's just not that much money you're getting you're getting way more just from playing the rounds oh shit okay all right let's just take down these you can also see the rounds are getting quite long at this stage the 14 waves but we are nearing the end of this. There are only 25 waves. And that's it. After you beat the 25th wave, or on the 25th wave, there's a big final boss, and then you win. Which is kind of fun. Alright, very good. We're avoiding those big nasty hits from the orange guys. Because they just... They, they really hurt. I mean, they took down one of my guys, like, immediately. Which is very impressive, because we do... Uh, we do have quite a lot of defense. <laughs> very good. Cool. Also, honestly... I, I could just listen to the soundtrack for this. I mean, I have. I have just listened to the soundtrack of this. It's just a really good album. It's just really fun. I find... So, honestly, like, I find it so interesting to just, like, take this concept of the auto chest store and just adding it into other games. I kind of brought that up earlier, right? Where my big thing is that I really like... Um, I mean, I really like auto chess games. I think they're very fun. And, um, but I too, I always kind of like, was like, hmm, I think you can do a lot more with it. And I'm not entirely sure what, because I'm not working on one myself, you know? And like, that's always one of those things. It's like only so much creative energy you have. So while I always felt like there was something more you could do with it, I never really had like the mind to really figure out what exactly that would be. But... I think this is honestly, this this answers that question to me. You can do anything you want with it. That's the cool thing about it. You can just put this system in any type of game, really, and then just 
you know, use it as like an economy, like a system of economy, or as just like a unit selection system. And then what the actual game is doesn't really matter, right? Because the auto battle, auto chess style games, they tend to be kind of split into like a shopping phase and into a combat phase. Well, the combat phase can be anything. It doesn't really matter what it is, right? And the shopping phase, well, that's kind of up to you. All right, we have leveled this up now. Oh, we only need one more juggernaut here. Okay. I'm going to sell this guy, get this blade right now. Ooh, wow. Enemies pushed by the juggernaut take 193.6 damage if they hit a wall. I mean, <laughs> you can see how far they're getting pushed away, so... It's a pretty high chance of it connecting. If you lose one of you guys during battle, do you lose the synergy as well? No, you don't lose the synergy, but you do lose, uh, do lose the abilities they have. Right, so that's uh, something to kind of be aware of there. Especially the use, that, that especially matters with like auras or something like that. Alright, we killed the lead here. Gotta just clear out these last few here. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Enemies take damage per second. Alright, let's reroll this a little. Orbitism. Mm. Amplify AoE damage. Oh, that seems pretty good. I mean, like, we have a lot of AoE damage. Alright, let's max this out. We only have 13 gold, but the next round is the last one. So there's no point in saving. Right? Like, anything that we can't max out, we're just, you know, not gonna go for at this stage. Oh, there's the Juggernaut. Ah, that hurts. Okay, what can I do? If I get rid of this Outlaw, I can max out the Juggernaut. That's probably fine, right? Sells for four, right? I sell this. I sell this. I get this. I get this. Alright. I just want to get this Juggernaut to, like, level three. You know, level three units are very powerful. And... Whatever, we don't need the outlaw. Anyway, let's do this. Last round, boss round. You can see this one has uh, fun party effects. Hey, 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 don't don't attack me like that. I'll be shooting right back. Got him. Nice. Well, you look at that. You have beaten the game. And that's it. Now we can enter loop or we can enter um, new game plus, which is pretty fun. Anyway, that is SNKRX. Go give it a look if you like it. Uh, I, I like it. I think it's a really cool game. And please let me know what you would like me to kind of show you next. I already have my next game picked out. I already know what I'm doing there. Uh, but if you have any ideas for you know something else you would like me to show, or talk about, please just make sure it's somewhat recent, right? The closer to today, the better. It doesn't have to be released exactly today or this month or this week, but it also shouldn't be from 2003. Anyway, I'll see you guys around. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a rating and goodbye.